What's up, Jags? I'm Tiara, a UHV alum and staff member. I'm 5'2", a taco fanatic, and a Texas native from San Antonio. After being mentored by the best faculty and working alongside top-notch staff, I'm passionate about UHV's mission to help you succeed. The goal of this series is to reveal all the treasures at UHV, and trust me, we have plenty to share. So buckle up and let's get started. Nice little stroll from the bookstore. We got our necessary materials. So everything is good to go. Uh, so where are we going again? Oh my gosh, Madrid, what are you doing here? Why, if it isn't Tiara. Yes. Where are you headed? I'm going to talk to Professor Snyder. Did you want to come? Oh, Snyder, eh? No. I would like to speak with him. Perfect, but you have to have the attire. You mean... This? Perfect. Let's go. Alrighty. Yeah? Do you have a second to talk about some things? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, got a little bit of this going on? Come on, let's see. You mean this? That, that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Alright, I think you're good. Alright, come on. Sweet. Ah, so cozy. Thank you for letting us in. We're here to, to discuss important matters. Yeah, baby, yeah! All about UHV. Oh, this is very, very weighty, yes. Okay. This might deserve our full should attention. I, so should I introduce y'all to the audience? I suppose so. What up, Jags? I'm here with some of the coolest people on campus. Before I introduce them, I would love to let you know that we are in the West Building, so a little change of scenery, and you are going to meet some awesome professors. So without further ado, please let the audience know who you are and what you do here. I'm kind of a big deal. All right, well, I am Professor Snyder, and I teach English here. Um, if you take freshman comp, yeah, there's a very decent chance you will have to take me, and I can also be seen in various other literature classes that I sporadically teach when I'm not doing freshman comp. So they're definitely going to see you. People know me. Oh yeah, y'all are lucky. My name's Anthony Madrid. I'm an English professor here. Well, an English assistant professor. I'm the lowest grade of professor. Mm. Assistant professor. Not a lecturer. Not that's a lecturer. Oh, well, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's the lowest grade. It's the here. Anyway, <laughs> I, <clears throat> I teach literature and creative writing classes. And I'm also the, as you know, I dictator know. for life of the poetry club oh. here at UHV. And so uh, I help to produce the magazine, the little poetry zine that we have here at UHV. Sweet. Called Schemer. Yeah. And sometimes called Skeeter. Yeah. But, but you'll find that out later. Yeah. Last issue of every year is Skeeter. Yeah. So you like to write poetry mm -hmm. on your free time. Mm -hmm. Professor Snyder, what do you like to do on your free time? <laughs> uh, boy, I listen to I listen to a lot of baseball games. I read many leather-bound books. Uh, I try to help raise a daughter and teach her math. She does very well. Um, and other than that, I'm out and about with my friends trying restaurants around town because that is one of the chief things that you can do in Victoria as you will find oh. out. Okay, so we have to cover what our favorite grub spots are then oh, in Victoria. Right. Since you mentioned, where, what's your favorite grub spot here? Oh boy. Okay, lunch, Guerrero Rense. El Guerrero Rense, it's on Lorenz Street. I just Never got done there. an hour before eating this wonderful pupusa meal with two pupusas, fried plantains, and this wonderful hominy sweet tamale. They bring you a papoose? A papoose. That sounds really good. It's like a baby and a... No, 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 no. It's kind of like a... They kind of like fry it. It's kind of like a tortilla, but it's filled with... A baby. ...cheese and uh, chicharron. Okay. And then you put this, this thing it. called curtido on top, which is like pickled cabbage. Uh -huh. And it's oh. absolutely delicious. All right, what's the name of this place again? El Guerrense. 
It's actually... Guerrerense. Yes. Guerrerense. Yes, it's right, kind of near the corner of Red River and Lorette. I know exactly where that's at. Not the street, just those, or not the place, those streets. It's a tiny little, huh. tiny little restaurant. That's and, for lunch, and then. Okay, and for dinner, if you're going to have a steak, you go to this very greasy spoon called Gonzales Cafe on the south end of town. It's a very grisly uh, steak. Uh -huh. However, the taste <laughs> is out of this world. It's the best steak in town. Wow. So, and don't forget plan. about Texas Roadhouse and that, that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At Victoria, we have a lot of small businesses and food that you can only get in town. That's kind of cool, right? Especially for people coming from the city. I'm from San Antonio, so I understand if Roadhouse is something we frequently go to, but we got to try these places out, too. We need an Indian place, though. That's that is exactly mm -hmm. right. Yeah. If you're listening to this and they there's any possibility where you could open up an Indian place, please, yes. You got three customers You'll already. make a lot of money, you know? You don't need college, actually. Don't... Uh, <laughs> Just forget about Unless that. Unless you want to do like business Just management or something. Just drop that right now. No, you don't need that. <laughs> Just, you need a cook. Get a cook who can do Indian and you'll be fine. So, uh, it sounds like you're disappointed that we don't have Indian yeah. here. So, where do you go? Yeah. I like uh, Newt's. I like Newt's Thai. Thai. It's expensive. But, well, what we order is expensive. We get the red curry salmon. But that's re it's just really, really good. It's as, that's as good of a plate of food as you can get anywhere. You know, I, I spent 17 years in Chicago and a couple of years in New York City, and so I know like city, nice restaurant food. And Newt's, it's like that. It's like a, it's like a hot place that would be line out the door in Manhattan. Anyway, so I like that. That's my favorite. My favorite place is Kiko Ramen and Pokey. And you like that place? I love that place. Okay, what do you order? Two words. Octopus balls. Okay? This you got is it. Delicious. I'll I try octopus, octopus balls. balls. I'll try yeah, octopus balls. Nagi is not bad. That's true, too. Their steamed the pork eel. buns are pretty good. Don't make it more complicated. Let me see. I'll just just get the octopus. Just balls. The octopus <laughs> balls. I guess we gotta start small. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go in there. I'm marching around saying octopus balls, octopus balls, octopus balls. <laughs> They'll put something in front of me. Yeah, should know exactly what you mean. Okay. 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 Good. Done. Okay. Yeah. Consider it done. I'll try it. <laughs> Burger Nation's also very good, and we have a UHV discount there, which they y'all should check if we have UHV discounts. Sometimes I just pull out my UHV ID, and they're like, oh. I've heard of that. Yeah. Never tried it. Yeah. Top secret information. So only the three of us can know now then. You could. You I guess they'll know now. UHV ID and the, what's the discount? It's, well, they all vary. It's all different. It's part of our daily deals program. Huh. Huh. Mm -hmm. So outside of favorite places to eat, we have a lot of like activities on campus. So I know y'all are professors in the classroom giving us the knowledge. What do y'all like to do at UHV? His. Poetry Club is a very interesting place to be. Yeah. Very interesting place to be. So much so that I, I thought I was thinking of making guest appearances this year. Good. So. Good. Good. We're gonna uh, we're gonna open it as up. As you should. As you should. Remember? Oh, Outside International Fest is always yeah, like that's, that's something we look forward to, because um, it just turns out that here at this school there's 88 countries represented or something like that, and every one of them. The, the thing always starts with a flag parade where everybody's got a flag that's the size of a, of a tennis court and they all march along with those things and then you find out that they just changed the Tibetan flag and I'm like, what are you doing to me? That's not the Tibetan flag. Oh, yes, it is. The guy holding the flag told me, yes, it is. Because yeah. they just changed it. I don't know if it was Tibet or if it was Thailand or something else. They, they changed something. And uh, <clears throat> and then you have this huge food booths and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the highlight. <clears throat> That is a very nifty. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody comes out there and uh, yeah. and does their thing, and dancing and singing and stuff. Yeah. That's that's not to be missed. I mean, there's also something else that you told me is not to be missed a few months ago. What? The talent show. Oh, okay. During that, homecoming week. That yes, that I my students. I'm like, you're a fool. If you stay in the dorm room and you miss this, everybody's gonna be there. You'll be the only person in the dorms, okay? You can run around naked if you want to. We're going streaking! 
because nobody else will be in there. <laughs> Everyone's at that uh, talent show, and it's always crazy. There's always at least like two things that'll be like legendary. For like, like when the Peter rest of yes, his face with hot dogs. The hot dog he thing. warmed them up with the microwave. Yes. Everything. Yeah, just uh, he told me like he gave me a five minute description of that. that was, <laughs> really? Yeah. His face the whole time was like. That was a masterpiece. That was a masterpiece. <laughs> I'm going to take that with me to my grave. He got up there. Okay, you didn't see this. He got up there and didn't say a word, not a word the whole performance. And the performance went on and on it's and like on minutes. and on. He got up there and he had, he had a, a microwave, a cheap microwave, and put it there and put bread in it or the or the bun, the buns, I think yeah. is what he microwaved. Oh, and and then dogs. stood there and <laughs> waited for a minute and a half while it heated up. And we're all like, are you Placing serious? Placing out his mayo. <laughs> right, 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 right. And then he proceeded to make us all unbelievably sick because yeah. he just took hot dog after hot dog and painted it with mayonnaise to the point where you're like, it made you want to puke to look at it. And then he'd stuff it down. Everybody's screaming in agony. So I am more than anybody. People were watching me because I was like, just like, oh my God. Very anyway, it was brilliant. I emailed him that night. And I, I, he, I barely know the kid, but I told him, you are a genius. If you, you see were... Peter on campus, <clears throat> bring up his talent show performance. Yeah. Anyway, it's always like that at the, at the talent show. There's just like, there'll be two or three things that are truly over the plate, just completely crazy, completely funny. Or people get up and sing and they're actually turning out to be like, something straight off a of TV or whatever, where they're like, they got these silver voice whatevers. Mm -hmm. um, there are also ones that are terrible and whatever. It's fine. It's it's just a complete grab bag, and that's and everybody turns out for it. We got to bring back the uh, the playwright, the playwright. Yeah, that was the, because that, was that, bring that up yeah, that really needs to be revived. It really needs Only to be revived. if you make a guest appearance. Oh, he'll be okay. there. He'll be yeah. there. Okay, for those of you watching this. Um, what it was is a group of people got together to make, to do playwriting improv and they just, we would write sketches, sometimes just make it up off the top of our heads and things like that. And it was all exercises and we didn't think it was going to go anywhere. But then there was like, okay, well, if we're going to make an actual performance, then it's going to, you're going to have to have a script that you're going to stick to and you're actually going to have to rehearse. And we all thought, the adults in the room all thought, eh, they're going to, they're not going to bother. They're going to do it for two seconds and quit, but they didn't. They, they had a script, it was the stupidest thing ever written, and we thought, okay, well this thing's gonna go over like a complete lead balloon, and they, but they rehearsed it, they built the set, all the props and everything like that, and then I was like, all right, well let's go see this thing, and the, the shuttle, came from the dorms in several convoy rounds so that the place was like, there was like 80 people there. Yeah, like the auditorium half, was passed. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. And, and that dumb, dumb play, which was like a spoof on a horror movie stuff, <laughs> they, everyone laughed, including me, our heads off, our heads off. We were gasping for air. There was stuff that shouldn't have worked that worked that went right over the plate. And it was great, and everybody went, walked away from it, patting their bellies and happy as as can be. And he ran up and hugged Oscar. I told Oscar too. I was because like, Oscar was the guy, the kid who who mainly masterminded it. He wrote the he wrote yeah. either Brandon all or yeah, yeah 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 yeah. And they, well, they did have some really nifty actors. They did get some good acting yeah. out of that. So they uh, anyway that was really really terrific. And if we could have that every year. That would really, that would really, really add something to UHV that it that it would be nice to have. So, what are some of y'all's favorite like topics to teach? When, or even in your one class, there's maybe like a week where it's like, oh my God, I love talking about Shakespeare, and we finally get to do that in this class. When when do y'all have that aha moment as professors? I like I like doing the at the very beginning of composition. I like doing the five page bang out. This one was invented by a writer. Did you have to do that? I did have to do, do that? that. The five page bang out is fun because the first time that I made them do it, I came into class where I was like, I don't even know if you guys would be into this. Uh, I was so tentative. I was like, maybe yeah. we're not going to do it. I was like, but there was this, I, all I, the very first time I did it, I just, I said, uh, there was this kid who told me, I'm not afraid of doing the typing. I just need to know what to write. And I was like, if only I could get you all into that same mental space of like not being afraid of like five pages, <gasps> five pages. That's like that's like eighty years of work. Ah! You know, a thousand it's, words. It's, oh, it's no. complete. That's completely like no no person with experience writing feels is afraid of five pages. Five pages is nothing. Okay, if especially if you're just like so. I tell them, 
just fill the five pages with anything. And if you want it to go easy, just have it be a story that you like telling and that you've told many times in the dorm room. Just some kind of crazy adventure story. One time you and your friend in high school wound up stealing a car and all this crazy stuff happening or whatever. And you, so you just type it up and it, you chase it. Like you're, you're, you don't have to compose anything. You're just, you're just doing the typing. Yep. And then it turns out that if you do it that way, uh, you can do five pages in an hour. Can you feel the tension in the air right now? And to prove it, I did it myself. I pulled up and I was like, here, I'll do it first, and then I'll show you what I came up with. And I pulled up and I was like, banged out this thing. That's why it's called a five page bang out. And uh, it took me 57 minutes to do it. And I handed it out the next day in class. I was like, here, look, this, I just did it. Okay. And when they read mine, which was a crazy adventure story from whatever college, yeah, and we always put foil uh -huh, on aluminum walls. foil on the walls yeah. and stuff. Okay. They were like, oh, oh, this? I'm like, right, exactly. That's what I was hoping you would say is, oh, this is what you want. Oh, this I can do. Good, right. Yes, you can do it. Yeah, you can. You can do it. It's not a big deal. And I need you to time yourself because if, you, if it takes you more than an hour and a half to do it, you're not doing it right. There ain't no point in doing it if it takes you five hours. Okay. Then you're getting the wrong message. The message I'm trying to deliver here is one out, five pages is an hour if you do it right. If you know what you're doing, if you know what you're going to say, it doesn't take anything to do five pages. So they all come back, they write the best paper they're going to write the whole semester. Mm -hmm. And so I, sh I read them in transports every semester. I'm always like, why can't I just get them to do like this for all the papers? And that's I, the, the whole rest of the semester is just me begging them to get back into that headspace for everything that they do, you know? Anyway, so I do. I like that. I like that whole assignment. I like that whole rollout, and I like the, the, the lesson that it teaches. Yeah, break the ice. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, very, both of y'all, just very, you know, comforting, insightful, and honest. And that's what the students appreciate because, you know, sometimes at universities, the professors throw a syllabus on the table and then you have an SI or TA for the rest of your semester. But here at UHB, you get to meet your professors. They know your name. Like we talked about students from the past, Brandon, Oscar, playwriting, all these cool things. And you know, you also get to have that one-on-one -on -one with them in the classroom where we get to talk about even things that are not on the syllabus, like going down a rabbit hole of where you know, names come from or exploring poetry in Skeeter. So mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities and I thank y'all for, you know, taking the time to be here with us today and showing them all that we have to offer. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Shameless plug, you can always, even if you are not an English major, you can always fill your degree plan or your courses or electives with English courses or writing courses or humanities courses. So like they said, if there's something you're interested in and you're a business major but you have an elective, why not take Shakespeare or why not take humanities? Just so you know, give yourself a little bit of balance. So yeah, just definitely do that. Explore, New HV is here to help support you. And if you're ready to change your major after you do that, the advisors will gladly advise you. Yeah, that's my advice to you while we sit here with such amazing people. So we'll see you in the next one.